I'd now like to invite uh, Mr. Han Shaogong to the podium uh, to give his acceptance speech. Um, it will be given in its entirety in Chinese. Um, it will then be followed uh, by R.C. Davis, who has uh, agreed to read an English translation of the speech. Han Shaogong. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It is a great honor for me to be here tonight to receive this honor bestowed on me by the Newman Jury and the Institute for U.S.-China Issues. I am so pleased to accept the second Newman Prize for Chinese Literature. I certainly know that there are many other writers who are just as qualified as I am for this exceptional honor. The fact that this prize has fallen on me unexpectedly should not be seen as affirming my personal achievements, but as bringing attention to Chinese literature in general from the Neustadt family, sorry, not Neustadt family, Newman family, um, uh, and the Institute for U.S.-China Issues under the leadership of Dr. Peter Gries, as well as from readers from all over the world. Thank you, thank you, thank you for all, thank all of you very much. I regret that I can only express my gratitude in Chinese, although I wish I could someday express myself and make friends freely in other languages, such as French, Japanese, Russian, Spanish, Arabic, and so on. This is, of course, an impossible task for me to achieve because there are more than 5,000 languages in the world and any language genius is doomed to feel frustrated when confronted with such a formidable number. As a matter of fact, nobody, nobody can even acquire a full command of one's own mother tongue. It is said that English has nearly 500,000 words, which are, increasing, which are increasing by a few thousand new words each year. Uh, the Kangxi Dictionary of the Chinese Language contains 47,000 Chinese characters, which can be combined into countless words of infinite variety. Even if we study at a college for the rest of our lives, or even for the duration of our lives multiplied by three, we will still learn only a very small portion of our mother tongue. More importantly, Every language is public and non-public at the same time. So many words produce a great, great deal of ambiguity in specific contexts. A child and an adult cannot have the same understanding of the word marry, as uh, each has a different base of experience. Similarly, it is possible for people living in the frigid zones and in the tropical zones to have the same understanding of the word sun. Is that possible? Or can people who live in one place all the time and people who move around quite frequently have the same meaning of the word hometown? The reality of globalization is such that the rich are making enormous fortunes across national boundaries, whereas the poor are working hard to make a living within national boundaries. While, the rich, while rich people in the world are rich in much the same ways, the poor of the world are all poor in quite different ways. So what are those life stories beneath so-called globalization? Can we arrive at a unified definition for the plurality and variety of globalizations with the help of a dictionary? Over a decade ago, it was in a small village in southern China that I became puzzled by questions like these, thus accessing the initial driving force for writing a dictionary of Machao, and note, Machao literally means horse bridge in Chinese, and is the name of the village in the novel. Language is a door to life, and the Machao behind the door is of endless depth. We need to approach this subject carefully. Today, millions of Machao, the people of the story, pose these questions resulting in endless controversy. All the existing theories appear to be inadequate to describe the gigantic, 
but nameless reality, or to, dis to diagnose the inconceivable, distressing predicament and abounding vitality of languages indeterminacy. Under such circumstances, should we try to deny this reality, or should we be more mindful of the limitations of our language and its various products? This small book of mine is, of course, not a real dictionary, although many clerks in the bookstores have mistakenly placed it in the reference book section and even thought that Horsebridge is a name brand that is an intentional parallel and rival of Oxbridge or Oxford. This book is but a fiction, and for that matter does not promise any eternal and universal interpretation of any authoritative nature, nor is it intended to be a fake theoretical book, a history book, or, or a reference book. As much as any uh, other literary works, its projection of the scenes, details, uh, variations, individuality, uniqueness, and vagueness of life uh, is perhaps only to reiterate the right to be skeptical, to open readers' narrow views to facts and truths to the maximum extent possible. In this sense, literature always has a suspicious face. In other words, literature always recreates public life in a non-public way leading to new integration through new disintegration and pointing to new clarity with new perplexity, a process that perhaps will never come to an end. That is also one of the reasons why, when we hear time and time again the prediction that literature will perish, we don't need to worry too much about that. Thank you very much. Please join me in one final round of applause for the 2011 Laureate Han Shao Gong.